I read a book when I was young that made a clear distinction between being safe and being good. Now, that distinction doesn't mean those two are different all the time, but sometimes it's true. I think that's because we're living in the stages, the cleanup stages of a war. The war has been won, the enemy has been defeated, but the final battles are still being fought. When we pray the St. Michael prayer, we recall that fundamental reality of the spiritual struggle, as well as the path to true victory. We begin the prayer by saying, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. So who is this Michael and, and what does he do? First, he's an archangel, one of the nine different types of angels, spiritual beings who carry out the works of God given to us by sacred scripture. His name is actually a question, who is like God? It's a question that the angels bear with them into their battle with the fallen angels. It's a question that we Christians bear with us as well in our daily lives. St. Michael stands for God's people against Satan and the fallen angels who are our adversaries in this battle. Now, to be clear, they are no match for God, but they are more than we can deal with on our own. And so we ask for help, which God willingly provides to us. We close the prayer by asking for God's power to intervene. We say, may God rebuke him, speaking about Satan. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. This whole prayer is based on a military metaphor and it's incredibly powerful. The spiritual life as a battle. Military metaphors can also be tricky because they can make it sound like we have to force a victory through our own power, like we win the battle through our own might. The reality though is that in the spiritual life, victory is won through surrender to the God who has already carried the day. He has declared victory. We just have to believe him, believe in him, and to trust in his help, including his heavenly servants, his angels, his messengers who protect us in this battle. By recalling that it is God who acts, God who saves, we are truly set free. Remember, we are in a battle for what is good with a real enemy. And victory is not yours or mine alone. It is the Lord's, the God of hosts, the King of glory. He is the victor. For who is like the Lord? 